So I got my hands on the Teal Mask DLC early. Uh, the only problem is that it's entirely in Italian and it only plays on this and not this. So using Google Translate on my phone, I took a dive into this strange ROM hack. After becoming champion of Pandia and having defeated Violet, Professor Lantana has given you an invitation for the mask party of North Ivia. So I assume that the grammatical errors in this are on part of Google Translate and not the actual ROM hack creator, but it's still funny nonetheless. You will meet Celeste, the little girl unable to predict the future. E an evil Pokemon awakened from the turquoise mask. Yo, hello, see you. Welcome back to the world of Pokemon. Do you remember? I'm Lantana. People remind me how the Professor Dancer, as well as Powder. It is inhabited by many peaceful Pokemon. Pop Hip is also looking forward to Aha. Okay, I think you get the point, but just, just one more. <laughs> how did you dusty it? So actually starting the game, Lantana is just chilling out in our house and reminds us to pick up Coridon on our way out. Yeah, I don't think had any other options. He's blocking the damn door. So I pick up Coridon and go visit the neighbor. It is said that an ogre in times went, he was cursed by a witch, which yields it wicked. It was named by Nordivians with the name Ogre Pond. Torka with the mass turquoise evil. This story always puts me eye chills, but it's wonderful. So quite clearly, our neighbor has dementia. Moving on. Talking to various people in town, I learned that the Teal Mask Festival is about to begin. I check out the last house, owned by Mayor Rinku, who tells me, I are uh, a disaster. Celeste has disappeared. I'm terrified. She does not and never escaped. Hmm? Who are you? Have you seen Celeste by any chance? My name is Rinku, and I can't find any more of my daughter. Before disappearing, she told me his nightmare. Agon Pon, I won Pokemon of the Mask Pokemon, and he said she would take it. She was scared, and I don't have them believe. Look, I'd help me in Kirkhart. Could be at the woods. So I'll do my best to translate that translation here. Maya Rinku's daughter Celeste has gone missing. Before she disappeared, she gave her father some sort of premonition about the Teal Mask Pokemon, which led him to believe that she went missing in the woods. He asks her help with finding her. So I make my way north to Pasago Nord, which I assume just means cave. There were no encounters here, so on the other side, I find a house. The man inside tells me, I come from the Paldea region. I am looking for a Pokemon in a particular form. Here it is he, Gimmigul. Shape, Scringo. Ah yes, my favorite Paldean Pokemon. Stringo. I finally get my first encounter with a wild Diplin, and I have to say the sprite work here is pretty good for a Pokemon that was only recently announced. But the Crydon sprite almost felt too detailed by comparison. Luckily, all of the combat text in this ROM hack is in English. I wanted to try and catch our new little apple, but Crydon's only damaging move is Dragon Claw, which took it out in one hit. So here I decided I should probably actually check out my Crydon stats. But uh, how? There is no Pokemon tab in the menu. Did the dev just forget to add that? This does seem to be the case, as during my entire playthrough, I never got access to my party outside of combat. I tried my luck with another Diplin, but the results were the same. Heading inside Bosco Orc, which I know I pronounced wrong, triggered my PTSD of navigating Rock Tunnel as a six-year-old who didn't quite understand HMs yet. Despite not having Flash, I decided to poke around anyways, and oh, well, one of the new legendaries. Just, uh, wandering around in the forest as a random encounter. Well, all right, at least I can say that I was one of the first people to not only encounter Monkey Dory, but one of the first to capture it. The description here is pretty basic. One of the two heroes of North Ivia, Monkey Dory. Wait, two? I thought the loyal three were, you know, a trio. I head back to town, heal up my poison dragon, then return to the forest and try and navigate it without flash, only to learn that this is a pretty small area. Maybe I have to catch all three legendaries then. Okay, look, I'm gonna get a lot of things pronounced wrong in this video, uh, especially the new legendaries. Not only are their names just really odd to me to begin with, but these are like brand new Pokemon. I'm not gonna know how to say their names yet. So I go catch Okie Dogie, then immediately put him to use to finally catch that damn Diplin. Diplin uses the syrup that produces inside the body of him to cover Pomo. So I head back to town to heal up again, and I blow the rest of my money on Great Balls. Back to the forest once more, and I encounter Fezendipity, who I caught pretty easily. Okay, now I have all of the loyal three. I just need to head back to Lantana and proceed with the story. Oh, he's still talking about his missing daughter. I mean, yeah, that makes sense, but what can I do about it? I've been everywhere. I head around town to see if I can get the next part of the story to trigger, but no, nothing. I even tried getting Crydon to surf, because that's the thing that he's supposed to be able to do, but nope. So I head back to the forest, and oh, 
Okay, so there is more to this place. It's just super hard to find in the dark. This was a massive pain to navigate. It really feels like this place was set up to navigate without flash, as the patterns in the forest seem like they would just be annoying if you could see, but a challenge if you couldn't. The only upside here is that I was able to successfully flee from every battle, and there were no trainers to fight along the way. That would have been good for money, but not for sanity. I eventually found Celeste alone in the top left corner of the forest. I would read out her text here, but this was the one time that Google Translate seemed to do its job pretty well, therefore it wasn't funny. Ogre Pond jumps out at us, and we have our first boss fight on our hands. He is five levels above my best Pokemon, but I do have numbers on him, so this should be doable. <laughs> Synthesis. Yup, not only did this legendary seem to have an unlimited pull of synthesis, but it could heal up even more with Giga Drain. It had Solar Beam to do some real heavy damage and Faint Attack for that good physical dark damage. Don't forget, I can't access my party before a fight, which means that Crydon has to be sent out first. The only way to prevent that would be to have him knocked out before the fight begins. Crydon has a neat little ability called Drought, which automatically causes the effect Harsh Sunlight. This neat little effect allows Ogre Pond to skip the charging up stage of Solar Beam and just use it instantly. Oh, and Synthesis! Normally this move would heal Ogre Pond's health by half of its total HP, but when in Harsh Sunlight, this is up to two-thirds of its total HP. So then, how does my own Pokemon's ability help me? Well, it boosts the damage of Fire-type moves by 50%, which would be really helpful if Coridon knew any Fire-type moves. After losing four of my five Pokemon, Pheasantipity was sent out. It was glorious to see that it knew Ember, which I couldn't have known before because, again, I can't check my party. So, I wide it out. This means that I have to navigate the dark forest all over again just so I can re-attempt the boss fight. Oh, this time, I'm coming prepared. What you're seeing here is not sped up, or rather, I didn't change the video's playback speed. No, I turned on my emulator's turbo mode and got to training. Okay, now what you're seeing is actually sped up. This was me running back and forth between the town and the forest, just grinding up that experience. This went on for nearly half an hour. Early on, I was trying to level up everything, but I decided that that was a waste of time and just focused on Coridon. By the end, I had him at level 40, 10 levels higher than our boss. So I ran the gauntlet again, made it all the way back to Celeste and had my rematch. I started off with a Dragon Claw, which cut Ogre Pond's HP in half. I fully expected him to use Synthesis again, but it seems that being 10 levels higher gives you a nice speed advantage and I knocked him out. Celeste thanks me for saving her and rewards me with an Ipapa Berry. Oh, don't worry, I'll throw that away for you. She tells tells me that the Feast of the Turquoise Mask is about to start and we head back to town. Mayor Rinku is reunited with his daughter and tells us, I'll thank you for what you did today. I own a very rare stone. It seems to come from the past. Then I just get lost. Look at this message. Yes, this is in English. Seeker handed the meteorite to Lost Ellie's daddy. First off, what meteorite? When did I get a meteorite? I thought he was giving me something. And who is Lost Ellie? Do you mean Celeste? Why wouldn't they just call her dad by his name? You can see that this is not Google Translated. This is just in the game. Now we have to get ready at the party. Ah, already. Before I found it to this stone, to Nelia. Maybe you can resell it. Oh, it's a moonstone. I don't know how much that's worth, but sure, I'll sell it. I walk out of the mayor's house, but upon returning, something very strange happens. Mayor Rinku is now speaking English, and he is taking up the role of a wireless communication games NPC. Odd. Outside, I find Mei hanging out in front of the market. I come from the region of Honan V. I've heard of this party, and I took a vacation. You're on vacation too? This kind of caught me off guard, because I am currently, in fact, on a vacation from my day job. Talking to the salesman, he thanks me for saving the festival and tells me that they will now stock the best items. I'm not sure how that's related, but sure, I'm just here to sell a moonstone. You have to be kidding me. I couldn't find anything else to do, so I made a pretty tough decision. I ran the forest gauntlet again, just hoping to find something. 
And nope, nothing was there. But there is something that I haven't told you. Do you remember that NPC that was looking for the Gimme Goal Shringo? Well, I actually found one, but trying to catch it cost me my last Pokeball. I had sold off all of my items to be able to afford one more Great Ball, but I wasn't able to find another Gimme Goal. I had originally decided to call it there, but no, I have to do this. Oh yeah, I forgot I'm still in the forest. Uh, I'll be back. Okay, now that we're back outside, I'm gonna try something pretty fun. I'm trying to cheat to give myself some Master Balls and it does not seem to be working. Okay, so supposedly the one that I just used will give me unlimited Master Balls in my PC. So I'm heading back to town. Huh. There they are. Yeah, let's just go ahead and withdraw me some Master Balls. So I think the reason that I couldn't find another Gimme Goal isn't be- it, it, it's a weird thing. I don't think that the Gimme Goals are randomly uh, spawning. If you remember when I was first in the woods, I caught all three legendaries back to back to back. I got all three of them in a row before they started repeating. I'm thinking that little patch of grass, which is where the Gimme Goals can spawn, you don't just randomly find them. You have to actually take out a bunch of Diplins for one to spawn. So, gonna turn on Turbo and start Diplin killing. Obviously, I'm gonna be cutting out a lot here. But this is just so annoying. I keep getting put to sleep and I have killed so many Diplins just... Just spawned the gimme goal. Now, if you're wondering, the turbo I'm using is a bit slower than the one that I used earlier when I was like grinding. Um, it's just a bit more stable, a bit easier to control when you slow it down just a bit. All right, I'm out of Dragon Claw. Gonna have to run back to town. I can't even like catch this guy in Scarlet and Violet yet, and I'm already tired of his existence. All right, I'm out of Dragon Claw again. I'm gonna try just doing some some uh, cycling without killing. I'm just gonna try try running. And of course, there it is. Okay, so I was wrong. I didn't have to slaughter a bunch of them. Uh, just just had to keep cycling one way or another. Now, I hope these Master Balls aren't, like, glitched out. Uh, let me turn my speed hack off. All right, let's go. Use the Master Ball. Guess I'm gonna have to provide live translations now. He was born inside of a coffer approximately 1,500 years ago. Okay. All right, let's go visit our man and uh, see what we get for our gimme goal. I came from the Padilla region. I'm looking for a Pokemon in a particular form. Here he is. Gimme goal form chest. Oh, now it doesn't say Stringo. That's upsetting. What? <laughs> nothing. You get nothing. I, I did all that. I, uh, oh my god, I had to figure out how to get cheats to work with an emulator and give myself a bunch of Master Balls and do all of this. I I felt like if I didn't do this, if I didn't complete this one last thing, that I wouldn't be doing this video just this. I wouldn't have seen everything that there is to see in this ROM hack. But that was it. You, you just get a gimme goal. This guy wants it, but he doesn't want it from you. You can't give him the gimme goal. And I can't even look at the Gimme Goal. So, that was it. That was the entirety of the Teal Mask DLC for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I know Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has had a lot of controversy over time. People not caring for the graphics of it. There's not enough to do that it's too glitchy. Yada, yada, yada. There's been a, a myriad of complaints. Like, raids not working properly. New events starting. And then the event just causes Scarlet players to not be able to play it and crash, but not Violet players. Uh, I didn't have to experience that one myself, but I heard about it. That's pretty crappy. But honestly, after going through all of that, they can make the actual uh, Teal Mask DLC horrible, and I would still probably prefer it over <laughs> what I just went through. Now, I did learn after originally playing through this ROM hack that there, this is actually considered a beta. The people who made this are have actually made a full Scarlet and Violet ROM hack, which I might have to look into at some point, but I've also heard that it's entirely in Italian, uh, and I don't want to deal with translating again. I'm sure with proper translation, there were more of this that would have been explained to me that uh, Google Translate just failed to convey properly. So it might not have been that bad if I could have read it in the proper language, but I don't know. The, the Gimme Goal thing 
absolutely kills me, and the boss fight was ridiculous. But that was the Teal Mask DLC. If you guys liked this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. If you like this kind of like half scripted, half off riff kind of video, go check out my other channel. I recently put up another video that's also kind of along those lines. But I'm hoping to do more stuff like this on uh, this channel as well, on Junk Seeker. Uh, this channel is primarily a, a place to open Pokemon cards, but this is a this is a fun thing to do on the side. I promise I'll get better about not having long outros in the future. If you Again, if you guys enjoyed it, like, subscribe, all of that. Hopefully, I will see all of you guys next time. Uh, if I think there were any funny outtakes, uh, here they are. <laughs>